वेलकम बैक टू माई कोर्स एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ बायोकेमिकल इंजीनियरिंग नाउ लास्ट कपल ऑफ लेक्चर्स आई ट्राई टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन काइनेटिक्स ऑफ होमोजीनियस रिएक्शन नाउ टुडे आई वांट टू डिस्कस वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ रिएक्टर्स नाउ क्वेश्चन कम्स वॉट यू वॉट यू मीन बाई रिएक्टर्स रिएक्टर्स मीन्स काइंड ऑफ वेसल इन विच द रिएक्शन टेक प्लेस now uh, that means it is very simple that a container the vessel mean in container when we put different reactant where the reaction takes place that is called reactors now what do you mean by bio reactor because we have another term because since we are this particular <coughs> course is on biochemical the uh, engineering so bio reactor also uh, it is uh, same vessel in which the reaction takes place in presence of some uh, either from bio molecules so maybe it might be living cell it may be non living cell so i can i can give the example suppose some reaction takes place in uh, presence of living organisms we call is a biochemical reaction or it is uh, suppose the reaction carried out with the help of some enzyme which doesn't have life but the enzymes uh, uh, that is also we consider as a bio reactor so so if you look at uh, here the uh, the reactor is the heart of uh, chemical processes because <coughs> because the here where the reaction take place am i right and uh, chemical reactor is a vessel in a chemical process or plant where the chemical transformation or reaction take place to generate the desired product so so it is very simple say so uh, in the vessel in which the reaction takes place that is called chemical reactor this is like this now if you look at the bio reactors deals with organisms or biochemically active substances derived derive from such organism if the reaction takes place with the help of this organism or biochemically active substances derived from the organism because as per example enzymes can be see are secreted by the living cells maybe plant cells maybe microbial cells maybe uh, you have uh, uh, animal cells so but if we if the reaction takes place with the help of enzymes that also we can consider as a bio reactors now <coughs> question comes so what are the bio reactors and the unit operations uh, so so if you if you, if you look at the this is the bio reactors what do you call the heart of the uh, chemical process after the reaction is over <coughs> we pass it through the separator well, so any biochemical or chemical industry we have a different separator process what do you mean by separator process separator process means where the solid is liquid separated from the liquid or liquid liquid separation also will be there then there is the involvement of the heat exchanger because uh, as you, as you know any kind of chemical reaction or biochemical reaction that depends on temperature so you have we shall have to maintain the temperature so we require the heat exchanger the utility different utility that that all also present in different industry utility like uh, we we might be requiring the soft water we might be requiring some steam requirement so all this under, under this all under under Um, it comes under the this uh, utility then process uh, process control that is another important uh, to operate the process that we shall have to maintain the temperature we shall have to maintain the agitator speed we shall maintain that uh, that ph of the solution some cases we shall have to maintain so these all are under uh, under uh, under uh, this unit operations and as for example for controlling the temperature we shall have both the cooling and heating arrangement for maintaining the ph we shall have uh, both the acid and alkali tanker your pump should be connected with that as the as the ph going down you have to add some alkali to it as the ph going out you shall have to add some kind of acid to control the ph so these are the things that we have now let us see the what is the classification of the reactors now we look at the classification of the reactors we can this may be classified in three different ways one is called mode of operation the geometrical configuration the contact pattern between the phases 
so so uh, uh, mode of operation mode of operation means uh, but three the three different mode of operation we have one is called batch process another called feedback fed batch process another is continuous process now question come what do you mean by what do you mean by that you know batch process batch process means uh, if you look the batch process is like this and suppose this is a reactor and here you have started and this is liquid so we put the substrate here we want to re react a to b so we put the substrate a and then at a time we shall have to put the substrate at a time in the batch reactor this is the batch reactor at a time we shall have to put that substrate let the reaction take place after the reaction is over you take the material out in between you are not putting any material inside the system now if you look at the fed batch what do you call fed batch is fed batch is similar to that reactor whatever i have shown you that only the thing we start with small volume and then slowly slowly we increase the volume fed batch you know different batches we 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 put it like this now what is the basis of that why you do that because and how we do that if you look at like this uh, this is the substrate concentration ca so if you consider this this is v1 am i right this is v1 this is v2 this is v3 this is v4 this is v5 so you know that when it uh, when it comes here then you stop the operation and after the after the reaction is over you take the material out so what is the fed batch you 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 give the feeding but you are not taking anything out from the reactor that is why we call it fed batch reactor now here i can give the example suppose your substrate concentration keep on decreasing with respect to time this is with respect to time then again you are giving a feed here so that you you increase the now this level this level of substrate should be much below the inhibition level what is the inhibition level inhibition means every substrate uh, above this concentration uh, which retard the ke chemical reaction if retard the chemical reaction that is undesirable then your product formation will be less so we want to operate the system below the uh, that inhibition level so uh, what we do initially that we fix that uh, concentration much below the inhibition level let it go down then uh, after certain time again we give the feed to rise the at the same level again it goes down like this again rise it again goes down like this this is how v1 this is v1 v2 v3 like the different volumes we get now we can we can have another pattern here that uh, we can we can this suppose ca this is repeated feed batch and uh, this is another we can we can do we can this is decreases like this then increases then we slowly slowly food in such a, such a way the rate at which the substrate consumption take place at the same rate we are feeding it and and we feed up to this level continuously and then then we stop the feeding then it goes down like this so there is different way we can uh, operate the fed batch now why we why you go for the fed batch system the fed batch system is applicable where there is a substrate inhibition in case of substrate inhibition we preferred the fed batch reactor we'll discuss uh, when we we we'll discuss some different process i shall discuss in det details now another reactor we have the continuous reactor what do you mean by continuous reactor continuous reactor continuous reactor means suppose this is the reactor that we have here we have a starter so there is a continuous inflow and continuous outflow now here i want to point out one uh, typical thing that uh, whenever we operate any kind of continuous process continuous process first usually we operate in the batch mode suppose we want to carry out the day to b we want to carry we want to operate in the batch mode let the reaction take place when rate of reaction is maximum then we start feeding this continuously we take the some product out continuously this is how the continuous system has been operated now continuous system may be of two types one is called cstr and the we call plug flow reactor pfr 
plug flow reactor okay so two type of the plug flow reactor looks like this we will discuss in detail the difference is that in case of uh, in case of CSTR, this is CSTR, is a continuous start tank reactor. A continuous start tank reactor means you have a starter and continuous inflow and continuous outflow, and this is very easy to operate. Now, if you look at the this is the plug flow reactor. In plug flow reactor, you are giving the feed to one end, and it is uh, something similar to the tubular reactor. So, <coughs> so one end you are feeding and another end you are taking. So when liquid flows like this, there should not be any kind of back mixing or axial mixing takes place. There might be radial mixing, radial mixing is okay, but you know that back mixing does not take place. But here we have back mixing, but here we do not have any back mixing. So, <coughs> so we have, uh, we have we have here uh, the fed budget, fed, uh, the different mode of operation, the batch, uh, fed batch and continuous. Then if you look at the geometric configuration, we have tubular and agitated tank reactor. Tubular means it is kind of tube, uh, liquid is flowing through the tube. Agitated reactor, I have already shown there is a agitation that we have. And then contacting pattern between the phases, we have the uh, pack bed reactor, we have fluidized bed reactor, we have trickling bed reactor, we have bubble re uh, bubble column reactor, we have air lift reactor. So different type of reactor. So this is uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the heterogeneous reaction. The heterogeneous reaction means more than one phase is present in the reaction mixture. So this I shall discuss in details when uh, I shall I shall discuss the individual processes. Let us look into this uh, that uh, batch reactor that we have. <coughs> batch reactor is the reactants are charged into the vessel at the beginning of the operation and the products are discharged at the end of the operation and during this process there is no feed addition or product withdrawn. So this is the this is the, this is the exactly what I, I told and batch system is very easy to operate. Just you take uh, the substrate and put it in the reactor and uh, let the reaction take place. After the reaction is over, you take it out. This is called batch process. Now, the chemical reaction, uh, this is application is the fermentation of the beverage production, chemical industry for dyes and ink production and wastewater treatment process. It is largely used. Now, let me talk about uh, this uh, fed batch reactor. Fed batch reactor is the, a tank in which the reactant are charged initially and, and limiting reactant is added continuously during the operation and no, no product removal during the process. So I told you that in this, in this reactor, we start with small volume, then let the reaction, then slowly, slowly we, we, we feed this liquid like this and until all this is the final volume. When, uh, when this final volume is coming, then let the reaction take place. After the reaction is taking place, you take the material out. So, they, but during feeding, they, you are not taking out any product from the reactor. The application is the chlorination of a liquid pharmaceutical industry. Particularly, I can, I can, I can mention the Baker's fermentation process. Baker's fermentation process is largely used. Now, if you look at the Baker's, the one mole of glucose produce po about approximately 0.5 grams of substrate, the uh, cell mass. So, naturally, if you use more uh, your system, you use utilize more glucose or more sugar, you will get more cell mass production. So, so naturally, we want that you know the, how this reactor can use more substrate because we know if you, after certain substrate concentration, it has some inhibition effect. So, but to go consider all these things, we find that fed batch is a process through which we can increase our Baker's product, product, that uh, production to a great extent. Now, let me talk about the continuous process. Continuous process is the vessel in which the reactants are fed continuously and products are withdrawn continuously. Only the thing I highlighted before 
that continuous system when you operate first we operate in the batch mode and after the uh, after the when the re rate of reaction is maximum then we continuously uh, put the reactor in and continuously take the product out the reactant take place over space and that is the application is the chemical industry like Harvard process bi biological industry largely used and <coughs> brewing antibiotics and wastewater treatment process we use this particular process now picturally that uh, this process looks like that that fit batch process we put the material at a time after after feeding we are not taking the material out after the reaction is over we can take the material out but in the uh, fed batch process we small small feeding we, we should we should have to give with uh, with respect to time but at the here also we cannot uh, we cannot uh, so there we have a feeding continuous here we don't have a continuous feeding body here you have a feeding here so until unless the final volume is rich we go we do the feeding then we we stop the feeding let the reaction take place completely then we take the product out in the continuous system the continuous inflow and continuous outflow from the system that take place <coughs> this is how we can explain it picturally let me talk about uh, this uh, tubular reactor tubular reactor is kind of plug flow reactor this is a plug flow reactor i told you it is like this this is the tube and you have pass this uh, and it it flow like this now basically the tubular reactor is a uh, um, uh, plug flow reactor is that it is kind of uh, plug flow means is the call it the, the plug flow that is nothing but we call it piston flow what is piston flow because we know they they if you have a piston when it uh, the, the picture the, when they have a syringe we have a the, that we, we have when you when you put this uh, that you know that uh, shaft forward then it, the liquid is moving when it's moving there is uh, the velocity across this uh, liquid across this uh, cross section will be more or less uniform but when liquid flows through this tube tubular required reactor we have gradient of uh, this uh, velocity because we find the liquid close to the cell wall with the wall of the tube is the less velocity as compared to that of the center because uh, there will be friction between the wall and the and the liquid that is why the velocity reduces to a great extent now reactor consists of hollow pipe or tube through which the uh, reactants flow where the reactant moves as a uh, plug flow along the now the piston flow basically we consider as a ideal flow ideal flow is kind of uh, very rare to happen uh, so you know that we can what if you make the flow the turbulent flow then it is tends to piston flow not exactly piston flow tends to flow. then velocity gradient across the reactor will be minimum because that uh, velocity gradient across the reactor will be minimum if we if we if we flow pattern if you change from lamellar flow to the, the turbulent flow now concentration of reactant play if, uh, that uh, varies along the pipeline there so if you if you plot the concentration you will find keep on changing with respect to distance no axial mixing uh, but uh, only the radial mixing what do you mean by radial mixing i told you this is the tube if your tube is there so the liquid can have the uh, radial mixing that in a circular direction not in the axial direction this axial direction is not is permissible but radial mixing is permissible the homogeneous if you look at the homogeneous and heterogeneous reaction it is used application and continuous production and high high temperature reaction this is used now this is how picturally this process looks this is tubular reacted this is tube you can see how well if you, you, you put the feeding one end it take the product in the other end now cstr is a kind of uh, reactant and products are continuously added and withdrawn while the content within the vessels are vigorously stirred with the internal excitation the cascade cstr can be used uh, for the high higher 
conversion of reactant. What is cascade reactant? Cascade reactant means if we have the CSTR in series because this is this is this is CSTR. If we connect with the series, then we call it cascade reactor. This is this is we call it cascade reactor. An application is biological industry such as the brewing, antibiotics, and waste treatment processes were largely used. It is the continuous uh, tar tank reactor looks like this. This is the vessel in which the reaction table. There is a starter and the purpose of starter to maintain the homogeneity in the reaction mixture. We put the feed in one end and take the product in the other end. Now, uh, let me now take, uh, let me discuss the pack bed reactor. Let me let me show you that uh, pack bed reactor. Suppose this is a this is a pack bed reactor, and here this is the this is the tubular reactor, the cylindrical reactor, and this is perforated disc, and here you pack the solid material like this. They're lying one after another, like this. What do you call pack bed reactor? So you pass your substrate and you take out the product like this from this. This is a pack bed. Now the interesting feature is that in the pack bed reactor solids they will touching with inner the packing this is the packing material, am I right? This is called packing material. Packing material. Now they 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 pack to one after another due to the gravitational force of attraction. Now when you pass your liquid, uh, due to the packing, what will happen? Uh, this portion where the solid solid they are lying after another liquid cannot penetrate this because the liquid will flow wherever there is the void space. Then in the void space, liquid will go. Liquid cannot go where the solid solid they are touching with each other. So, the, what I want to say that you know, suppose this is the solid matrix, and whole the whole portion of the solid matrix matrix will not come in contact with the with the substrate. Suppose we want to do the immobilization of the enzymes, and enzymes are immobilized on the on the particular solid surface, and whole surface the enzymes are. Now, if the other 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 uh, the solid material they are touching with each other, this portion whatever enzyme is there that will not come in contact with the substrate. So, that is the problem with the packing, uh, packing bed reactor and not only that in case of cell mass growth the uh, when, uh, when you do the immobilization of the cell, cell will multiply and when cell multiply what will happen? It uh, this uh, layer will be becoming thickening and when the layer is becoming thickened then what will happen? The pore size of the of the of the particular pack column will be reduced. As the pore size reduces, then water flow will be affected, and liquid flow will be affected, and then you will they will they will be channelized channel the channeling of the liquid flow. If there is a channeling of the liquid flow, then rate of reaction will drastically reduce. Then you have to stop the re, uh, process and regenerate the system again. Now let me tell another reactor what we call expanded bed reactor. What now this solid particle they are lying with each other, am I right? They are lying like this due to gravitational force of attraction. So this is like this. Now, now if you increase the velocity, this uh, this is substrate is coming, product is going. Now if you if you increase the axial velocity the axial force if it increases a time will come this will overcome this uh, this gravitational force of attraction then particle will be separated from each other what we call expansion of the bed will take place now if as soon as the expansion of the bed will take place then whole portion of the solid matrix will come in contact with the substrate then naturally your rate of reaction will increase so the in case of expanded bed reactor the expansion of the bed take place now, in case of fluidized bed reactor, uh, fluidized bed reactor, this uh, this velocity will be much high, 
and since the velocity is high, this particle separation also very high. There also the expansion of the bed also very high. So this is this is like this. This is the how we differentiate that. So packed bed reactor, if you if you look at that, a vessel filled with cat catalytic pellets larger than one centimeter to avoid the excessive pressure drop and the reacting fluid passing through the void space between them. Pumps can be used to make the fluid move through the pack bed. Application is wastewater treatment by using uh, then immobilized cell uh, system, then multiphase uh, cell reaction and pharmaceutical industries. Then examples is like this, this is the packing bed, we, we sometimes we recycle back to have more conversion efficiency of the process and we take the product out from the top. The fluidized bed reactor I have already explained, only I want to highlight here, a vessel filled with the fine particles that is smaller than uh, 500 uh, millimeter and that, that are suspended in the upward flow fluid at the high enough velocity to suspend the solid. And what is the typical velocity is that 6 to 20 meter per hour. And what is the recycle ratio is 5 to 500. And expansion of the bed is about 30 to 100 percent. Now in case of expanded bed, it is 30 to 40 percent. And now here, it is about 100 percent expansion take place. The multiphase system with biocatalyst, food processing industry, chlorination, all of olefins, alkyl, this is largely used. Now this is how the blue days better occur. You can see the particles they are separated from each other. Now trickling bed air reactor is something similar to the back bed reactor. I don't like to discuss again. The bubble column reactor is a very simple reactor. Uh, I can I can give the example that uh, that uh, here. This is uh, suppose this is the column, and um, uh, and what you do there is a sparger here. We put a sparger and this is the liquid and this bubble will go like this. So you have cell suspension here that will, uh, that will react there. The vessel filled with liquid and gas as reactant and feed from the bottom and move upward in the form of bubbles. Liquid reactants feed from the, uh, from the top and we don't from the bottom. That, uh, that application is that single cell protein production upon which uh, the cheese way it is used. Now again, that, that this is largely used in the uh, microalgae uh, algal fermentation process. This is how it looks. This is the this is what you call a sparger that you can see the sparger and uh, and uh, and then this is how the bubbles are moving upwards. Now then air lift fermenter is the, we have uh, here the air lift uh, bioreactor is similar to bubble column reactor, but differ uh, the fact that they contains a draft tube. So uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in case of bubble column reactor, we don't have any draft tube. The here is the draft tube. So when you do mm, the aeration here, the bubble will go and uh, some of the bubble will recycle back here like this and, uh, and most of the uh, air that will go out of the system. I shall explain, uh, explain picturally in the next slide. Then application is the photo bioreactor for algal cultivation. Largely we find it is very good for the growth of algae and aerobic bioprocessing uh, technology and single cell protein production. This is the uh, different types we have as I told you here. If you, if you look at that, if you do the aeration at the bottom and this is the drop tube we have inside the air drop tube, then uh, air will go out and some of the air due to the dragging force, it will come in this, uh, this area, this annular area and it will recycle back this. Then another, another way we can do that in the outer, here we are sparging and it will go out and some of the air will go come this way, which so that more mass transfer will require. And this is how we can done externally. This we can use this cycle like this that will take place. Three different way the mode it can be operated. Now another thing we have that is the membrane reactor. This is also very important. This is 
used for the dehydrogenation of ethane production of uh, um, monoclonal antibody and wastewater treatment process. Now, you can see that when suppose the A reacts to give B plus C, so you can you have different colored set here. So, due to membrane, you take out the suppose you are interested for the product red color. So, red color you can you can you diffuse out through the membrane port and you can, you can get other other than this from the mainstream you can you can find out this. So, you know that uh, construction of the material is very important and that uh, of the reactor is very important it should be flexible and durable and non toxic to reactant and product resistance to chemical and metabolic products of the organism resistance to withering low cost and, and available easy of fabrication and corrosion proof and high transparent. So, uh, high transparent in case of photobiological reaction because we want to use the light uh, light energy for the growth of the microbial cell. Now, for construction of uh, material, I can give the typical example of uh, chlo chloro the, uh, chromium. If we uh, give the chromium in the stainless steel, then there is a acid resistant property of the stainless steel increased to a great extent. Usually, the, we use the SH304 for our day to day requirement for in the fermentation industry, we recommend SH316, uh, sometime SH316. 316L that is we use for pilot pen and large scale operation. Now, this is the lab scale, this you can see that this is the lab scale and this is the common scale, scale operation how it looks. Now, this is the reactor how it looks, a, a reactor will be having and so many things you can see in the reactor uh, that uh, we shall have the hesitator, we have the steam for the sterilization purpose, this is the harvesting line that we can after the fermentation is over we can take it out here the pH probe, temperature probe that can be inserted, here is the dissolved oxygen probe that is interested, the cooling arrangement we should have, that uh, cooling jacket we have with a nutrient we should add like this and this is the motor through the agitation takes place, acid and base is added with the help of pump, pressure gauge is used to to monitor the pressure of the of the particular reactor. Now, this is the different accessories that we attached with the uh, reactor or the bioreactor that uh, I already pointed out before, I do not like to discuss more. So, so in this particular presentation, I, I try to give you uh, this uh, detailed information of the reactor and what are the different types of reactor is there and what are the different accessories that are present in the reactor. So, um, so in the industry we, do, we use three different type of reactor, we use the batch reactor, we have fed batch reactor, we have continuous reactor. Then we also we have seen the pack bed reactor, pack bed reactor may be of the other types, we have expanded bed reactor, we have fluidized bed reactor. And other type of reactors we have as for example, that bubble column reactor, real lift uh, bioreactor, where uh, this is used where the uh, shear force is very less because in case of normal fermentation process, if we use the mechanical starter, there will be kind of shear force. So, some of the uh, living cell, they are very sensitive to the shear force. So, there we, we, we cannot use the mechanical starter, there we can use the bubble column reactor or real lift fermenter. So, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, I hope you will get, uh, you, have, uh, you get some information on the reactor which is used both chemical and biochemical industry. Thank you very much.